Hey everybody, welcome to another special edition of the Mile High Game Guys Board Gaming Podcast. I'm your host Adrian. I'm Zach. And I am Jeff. And this is Gen Con Day 2 Recap. Uh, breaking news, I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel alright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, w- I will say this. It's it's only one twenty one right now. Yes, what? and everybody else is going to bed, and I was like, wow, everybody's going to bed super early. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I you guys watched Game of Thrones just now, uh-huh. and I uh, no we didn't, no we didn't. Don't Absolutely. let people know that you we... guys watched a show that you weren't supposed to watch. <laughs> uh-huh. Don't even say that we weren't supposed to watch it. Jesus. Christ. Well, whatever it was, I was not watching it because I'm waiting to watch it later with my girlfriend because that's a thing that we do, and. I went upstairs like, and tried to read, and I just kept falling asleep in the chair upstairs. This is like, against the law. I am not going to watch this with the rest of you. It's like, it's like, man, this is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> this, it felt like the longest episode of a show ever because I kept dozing off and I kept oh, waking up and I was like, it, "How are they not done yet?" It was also a very long. Episode. It was. It was seventy-one minutes long. Yeah. Oh, that explains a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like. Holy shit, is this not done? Yeah. Oh my god, it would end here. Oh, wait, it's still going? It was oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that explains a lot. I'll keep that in mind when I go to watch it later. Zero spoilers. Zero spoilers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're pretty tired. Um, I mean, I had a long day yesterday, three, 5 a.m. to 3 a.m. And uh, then we got up today probably around... Well, I got up, I think, around 10-ish. Yeah, I woke up... I, 9-ish. I woke up at 8. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, you were up when Megan called me, because Megan called me, I got out of bed to talk to Megan so I didn't I disturb just, Aunt, it, came and down, and Zach was the only one awake in the house, just sitting yeah. at the table. I know, I know, I know Quietly, my, in yeah. silence. <laughs> I was just on my phone, and I was like, I don't want to just, my, because I was sleeping on an air mattress, and like, air mattresses in general, unless it's actually a good one, you wake up, or you go to sleep, and it's fine, you wake up, and it's, your, your ass is on the floor, and it's <laughs> halfway deflated, and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna get up now, because I don't want to just lay like this. Yeah. Um, and you are afraid of the corpse stain, to be fair. That's true, there, yeah. yes. Um. There was a bit. <laughs> there was a bit of a stain uh-huh. on your uh, air mattress. Yeah, we. I, mean, I think we talked about that a little bit last night. Yeah. That we're yep. pretty sure somebody. It died did not on kill you in the middle of the night. No, it didn't consume you. The darkness did not consume. <laughs> or, I mean, if it did, it inhabit in my body. Yeah. So maybe it did, and then it was yeah. like, no, yeah. Yeah. I'll skip this one. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so we all, we all, we got to the convention finally about eleven, a little before yeah. eleven. Um, kind of rushing out the door for some of us, but. Um, we got there and kind of wandered around for a little bit. Yeah. Because um, we were killing time basically until our first interview for the day. I waited in a line at Kingdom Death Monster for dice. Yep. Um, for CJ. We went with Paul and walked over and looked at uh, Eagle Griffin Games mm-hmm. as he haggled them. As, as he considered buying all three of the Vital Lacerda series, the which, Vinos, Galarist, and Lisboa. Which I, I, I try I mean I tried to reason with him. Um, when are you gonna play those games when you're not with Adrian? Yep. But so, by the end of the night he also owns all three. Yes. Yes. <laughs> by the end of the night he decided he did not care and he did end up buying them. He was able to get them for three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, that's with all the Kickstarter stuff. Yep. So. which I paid two ninety one during the Kickstarter. So he got it for only nine dollars cheaper than me. Or eight dollars uh, yeah, nine dollars more than I paid. So that was actually pretty impressive on his part. Haggled them down. Yep. Yeah. Saved like what, sixty bucks? Yeah, At yeah. Least, the yeah. the base price was gonna be three sixty. You got him to knock eighteen percent off for buying all three of them yep. at once. Yeah. He also did correctly point out that they were selling Vinos for ninety dollars and CSI was selling it for seventy bucks. Mm-hmm. Like and so he's like, he's like, away. he's like, I you know, I wanna buy from you guys. I wanna buy directly from from the publisher, but eh? Yeah, like <laughs> I also like twenty dollars. Yes. Yeah. And when you're spending three hundred, yeah, not having to spend twenty dollars, that's you know, nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Clank and Space sold out again. Yeah. And I'm yeah, just like I'm just gonna that. wait it. Yeah. At this point, it'll probably be out soon enough. Yeah. And, and I have bought I already bought one deck builder because we're uh, I ended up buying Super Mother Load from Roxley Games. Yeah. And I was like okay, and then I also bought the. Uh, the Champions of Midgard, the giant ass play mat that they had yeah. for thirty dollars to replace your now I don't know U shaped board. Yes, pretty much. Yeah, uh, I don't blame them. I blame Colorado. I blame yes. the state that we live in. Yeah. <laughs> well, although it it actually is like 
boards warping real bad in a dry state is because they weren't properly produced. Yeah. It, it, which isn't necessarily the company's fault. It's the mm-hmm. manufacturer's yes. fault, which is slightly different. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I got my terraforming Mars board. Yep. yep. I got the climbers. Yeah. So we you had to we, carry that around all day. Yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> um, I took my backpack because I was like, oh, yesterday my satchel was kind of like throwing my shoulder off, making my back hurt. I'll, I'll carry my backpack. And it was nice and light for about an hour. And then I bought the climbers. <laughs> and then I had to carry that <laughs> yeah, around like all fucking day. <laughs> I'm like, well, got to carry this around for us. I clearly should have bought it and been like, hey, stick a note on this and just keep it back here. And I'll come get I it at six. I know you people, right? Just don't, <laughs> just don't sell it. Um... But yeah, uh, then eventually we did get around. We had our first meeting uh, yes. of the day over with Upper Deck uh-huh. while we were waiting for them. Uh, Brandon from Brawling Brothers was the interview before us, uh-huh. so we sat there and glared at him while he gave his interview. We also chit-chatted with him before. Uh, yes. Yeah, we did. He, he saw us and came over and talked to us, which was cool. Um, Brandon's a pretty nice the guy. first of many podcast people that we talked to today. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we went over, and, and Zach, you and I played on the app for a little mm-hmm. bit before the interview, just kind of yep. get a feel for it. Uh, legendary um, do DXP? DXP, yes. Yeah. It's, uh, so this is their own fantasy universe that they yep. came up with, because it's it's a lot... They, they don't have to worry about licenses and yep. online games, and that can get weird and stuff. So. Correct. <laughs> and uh, while we were playing, Jeff, you talked a little bit with one of the designers for the uh, app. The producer. The producer of for the app. the game. Um... Ryan he was, uh, yes, he was just sort of hanging out and um, is, making is sure it, shit didn't fall apart yeah. while they were trying to demo all of because the, they have a ton of tablets yeah. to, that you can play it on. Because when we tried it today, it was day <laughs> two of it being uh, being released. Yeah, like, period. Yeah, so the server loads were a little and and he kept wonky. coming by and being like, he's like, you know, checking on us, like everything working okay. He's like, you know, we've had some issues. It's like every now and then you'll get a, a stuck card yeah. or something. You know, let me know if that happens. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's out on iOS, uh, uh, Androids in October, and then P- full-on PC releases in December. Yeah. Um, it's, he's a knowledgeable guy. Yeah. Like, he, uh, what was it, Sky, uh, Sky Reacher Studios mm-hmm, I think that did was the app for Upper Deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had done some other iOS stuff. They said they were about a studio of, like, 25 people. Uh, and they only had like seven people that made this app, because uh, putting twenty five people on a whole app is kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I think Hearthstone started with three developers. Sounds about right. Crazy yeah. like that. So, you know, that means this has to be at least twice as good as Hearthstone. Twice, yeah, yeah, <laughs> correct. That is exactly what that means. Uh, Suck at Hearthstone. <laughs> yes, uh, super nice guy. Uh, he talked a lot about the back end of the app and a bunch of the technical stuff that I won't bore all of you with, but I found interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, I'm, I should probably download that and try yes. it. Cause it's, it's a free download for right yeah. now. Oh. And then during Gen Con, it is $2. $2. To unlock everything. Literally uh, everything right now. And then otherwise, it's only $5. So it's, it's still not bad. It's yeah. much like the Star Realms yeah. app kind of version it's like free to download five bucks you unlock like fucking everything yeah so the free to free to download part it's basically it's gonna like the same heroes and like the same mastermind and the same scheme and stuff like that but it's a good way to be like do you like this game or not okay cool yeah yeah um so then yeah we played around that for a little bit and then we went over there and had an interview um Mm -hmm. you guys did the interview they they had three seats and so rather than like go make them look for another seat and everything and (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> and I decided, you know, rather than also like corner the one guy mm-hmm. with three people, I'd I'd leave it to you guys and go wander the dealer hall a yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, you know, so we won't talk too much about the interview here. We'll talk about that in some of our our post Gen Con mm-hmm. episodes. Uh, but uh, overall, well, interview went well. Yeah, yes. we talked with uh, Jason. Uh, he went through a bunch of the stuff about it. Uh, I mean, there's a reason he's in charge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, he, he talks very real, knowledgeable. He, very knowledgeable. Uh, he talks good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one, one, we don't know what that's yeah. like. Yeah. Uh, one of the coolest things that we talked about him, uh, we talked to him for about 30 minutes, or 20 minutes, and uh, 17 minutes, 15 minutes, like two <laughs> minutes we talked to We're him. We're just going to keep cutting high. We, just, of time. we said hi, and he, he didn't even look at us, and we just left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. We're important people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I, uh, he uh, had clearly been in other parts of Upper Deck for quite some time because uh, we had talked during the interview about how much we love Legendary Encounters. Yep. He had talked about, like, once we release on PC, there's a lot more we can do with this beyond just, like, a tablet. Uh, just in terms very of screen much, space because... Very much wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Like, once it hits PC, we could see Legendary Encounters and stuff being expanded into yeah. the app because it has a lot more desktop screen space. Yeah. Uh, and he had a couple little anecdotes about, like, the development of Alien... Legendary uh, Encounters. or Legendary Encounters, Encounters Alien, which was yeah. going to just originally be Legendary Alien. Yeah. And then they made it, and then they're like, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 well, and they're trying to think of masterminds, and they're like, the alien, you know, the, the alien queen, she's not a mastermind, she's just an animal. So it's just like a corporation, and that only means one mastermind. That's sort of lame. And it was going to be just like regular Legendary. And then at one point, they decided to be like, what happened if we flipped the cards over and then everybody's like, oh, God. <laughs> now it's scary. Now it's scary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of where Legendary Encounters came yep. from. And awesome. And we, we thank them very much for that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because that's an awesome game. Uh, and yeah. then I, I do have to say, because this one is a new, uh, the DXP is their own unique licenses and stuff, they didn't have the art, art didn't have to match anything except what they wanted to. Right. It's, definitely i think their best art so far it is like it for a fantasy style game it looks really great it's legendary art that is consistent yes it is consistent <laughs> the entire way right on uh so then after we finished up our upper deck interview uh i hadn't eaten all day i was getting pretty hungry and so we got in touch with uh patrick from low player count who was who was here for gen con for the day yep he was just coming he, he, he found a hotel for the night so he came in spent the day He's staying tonight, and then he's leaving tomorrow. Uh, sometime in the early, like, sometime in the morning, yeah. around before noon. Um, but so we went out, uh, met up with him, and went and got lunch with him, just the uh, four of us. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, you know, unsurprisingly, Patrick is just as nice in person as he comes across yeah. in all of his online and uh, podcast shenanigans. I uh, really enjoyed getting yeah. to spend some time with him. Uh, we did some little recording thing, which I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't think it'll ever see the light of day. It, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah. And then he did a Periscope. Yep. Which, so, context, uh, somebody gave him a fidget spinner, and, like, my eyes immediately locked with it because I had never actually had a chance to play with one. It was a disaster. And then uh, <laughs> my favorite thing is that literally he opens up the Periscope, looks at me, and then I spin it, and then I, and I try and do something, and then it just falls. I, it just... <laughs> It just crashes on top of me, and they're like, "Hi, <laughs> hello." Yeah, I don't know one person that might be yeah. watching this Periscope. Yeah, there was one person, and he uh, Brandon said hi. <laughs> <laughs> I think ten were watching at the end, but yeah, yeah, uh, it was it was great. That was a great lunch. Yeah, it was a good time. Um, Apparently, I'm well versed in the ways of fidget spinner balancing. Yes. Uh, also, I had, don't think I had seen a fidget spinner maybe more than once. Of this was my second time seeing a fidget spinner, and that's only because earlier this weekend in St. Louis, my mom brought one home from work. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, somebody had a stack of these on their desk, and was like, Tiffany, take one and put it on your desk. <laughs> she stuck it in her purse and forgot well, about it. Well, we are it. clearly I, all millennials yes. now. Yes. Yeah, uh, avocado toast and everything. Yes. Yeah. In fact, that's what we had for lunch, was just big plates full of avocado toast. I could have gotten avocado on my BLT. You, I, I really I don't know why you didn't. didn't, <laughs> but I could have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but then we hurried back from lunch, and we had another interview, this time with... Um, uh, Expedition? Yeah, uh, which is not so much a company as a new game. It's a app-driven RPG. Yes. Uh, this one is... Uh, Fabricate? is the publisher uh it's it's really just a couple guys that have come and made a whole app and a card-based rpg around that yeah uh we had a whole interview with them uh we have it recorded yep on multiple takes they'll they'll, they'll go together nice no one else will know that that happened once we get it together (laughs) um but so all three of us uh sat down and we we did a couple rounds of Mm -hmm. combat in the app and it's a pretty simple game. Um, it's, we'll, defi- it's definitely a lighter one, but it, it definitely seems like it's supposed to be like an intro to role playing. Yeah. Because um, 
you know, it's like you said, it's app driven. So you have a you have a story on the app and there are choices that you can make. Yeah. Um, and then when you get into combat, it, it had an interesting thing where you had uh, like you draw three cards. Do you want to just go ahead? You just instead of smiling, do you want to continue instead of me? Well, I was I was just gonna say that we we'll talk more about that during our yeah. later okay. stuff when we when we do the inter- when we play the audio for oh, the interview. Right. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> but so uh, we we played a demo of the game. I wasn't part of that. So <laughs> yeah. we played a demo of the game and then and then we stepped away. Uh, Zach and I stepped away mm-hmm. and let Jeff uh, run the audio equipment and give a a little one on one interview there with the audio equipment. So we have an audio equipment with, audio interview <laughs> with them, um, where Jeff. You know, ask them some more questions about developing yeah. that game. Yeah, they have a their their game is out, um, and they have a Kickstarter of like a Cthulhu based version coming oh soon. Of and course, of course, I asked him about that, and I was like, Cthulhu based, as is tradition. He's like, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um. And so yeah, we we did that, being all professional, doing audio interviews. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, we kind of had uh, a good chunk of the rest of the day to ourselves. Um, while Jeff was doing that, Zach, you and I, we went over and, and checked out Roxley for a little bit, talked mm-hmm. to Gavin over there, had him uh, teach us a little bit about Super Mother Load. Yeah, which then after he, after he kind of showed us a little bit about it, and you you asked him, you're like, hey, do you guys have any copies? He's like, yeah. And you're like, I will take one. Yeah. Uh, I've played Super Mother Load the like PS4 slash PC game mm-hmm. but I have not seen the board game it's I've I had heard a lot of good things about it and then um, also I probably a little being a little butthurt about not getting Clank because like I'm going to get a deck building game <laughs> I need one deck builder <laughs> yeah at least one yeah, yeah this will this will be my first four in a deck builder <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it seemed oh. like kind of a cool game yeah, yeah. Uh, we totally missed on the wait before lunch. Uh, Fantasy Flight had their uh, reveal of their like unknown like yeah. who knows what the fuck game yeah. they're announcing. Star Wars Expedition. No, Star- Legion. 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 Yes. That's what it was. Uh, it is a Star Wars tabletop miniatures game. Shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, skirmish based. Yep. So as Warhammer Fantasy is to Rune Wars, Warhammer Forty Thousand is to Star Wars Legion. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like bricks of units because it's you know sci-fi. So it's their you know skirmish round base, probably movement in by inch based yeah. uh, game system. When, the, when they said it, they had all of these you know areas set up for it's like the Endor one, which had trees and what, I'm gonna guess that doesn't come with the game. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> Makes it a look, good demo table. Yeah, it looks really nice though. Yeah. Yeah. They had Tantooine, um, which looked like a. Uh-huh. Brown desert with a couple of huts on it. <laughs> yeah, that's Tatooine right there. Uh, so. We just happened to be walking by just as they were uh, taking set all up. of the tarps off of the demo area and setting up the terrain. And they had clearly practiced this because they had pictures yeah. where all the terrain was supposed to go on each table, and they were referencing and taking stuff out of bubble wrap. Yeah, and like the ship was just getting set up. Yeah, there was a crowd of at least. Four deep around the yeah. whole area, watching them get that set up. And yeah, then people luckily, were getting real excited. Luckily, for it. I was just like, "Okay, well, I want to take a picture. I stretch my arm up over everybody's head. <laughs> Click. You got someone's bald spot, real good. I did. Yeah. It, which Patrick joked, he's like, <laughs> yeah, but that's my bald spot.' <laughs> uh, one little touch I thought that I liked is that like they had people guarding uh, like the perimeter to make sure that no one would go into there while they're setting up, and they were dressed like Imperial guards and stuff like that. Stormtroopers. Yeah. 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 Uh, another game that we got to see some uh, preliminary demoing of, we hung out over at Z-Man and checked out some Pandemic Legacy Season 2 we stuff. We did. Um, I missed out on this. Did you see any of the pictures yet? I have seen nothing. Okay, well, I will. Do you want me to show you the pictures that we saw? or You, too, can talk about it. And yeah. So, I will see so it. We'll share you okay. some pictures later. Tomorrow. Um, oh, okay. But... So we found out some interesting things. So the uh, one of the cool things is that the player cards, the the initial player cards, are completely blank. You pick your own picture from a sheet of stickies. There's like six of them, uh-huh. and so you pick your own picture, and you pick one of the four starting occupations, and you go from there. Um, some other things we had kind of already known that you're trying to deliver supplies, which counteract the plague cubes, mm-hmm. and if there's ever a plague cube, they don't go away. 
Um, more Iberia mechanic. Yeah. Than, yeah. Uh, regular pandemic, yeah. I think. The in, Because there's less cities at the start, at least, the infection deck has three copies of each city in it. Yes. Cripes. Yeah. And but, those are used to take supplies away. But each city starts the game with three cubes, yeah. so you're not going to lose uh, right away okay. with a bad draw of three of the same city. It's just going to have no supplies, mm-hmm. and you're going to be like, oh, God, we need to fix that city now. Yeah. Um, the guy running the demo did confirm. We asked him, and he said, yes, there are other envelopes with big stickers that go on the board to ex- expand okay. the board. So, we, I mean, that was pretty self Like, we figured that would be the case. Yeah. Okay. Um, but... So- giant stickers well I, we don't know if it's like you do portions of it or anything like that we just know. I mean there was those big uh, dossier sticker boards maybe yeah. it's just like a yeah, fucking maybe, huge maybe sticker maybe something you get like that there. yeah um, we'll find out when we eventually get a copy because mm-hmm. we will definitely but, be uh, because on each copies. of them they had it was like recon from North America do these certain things and then you can open up a package okay so yeah, yeah. um there's three starting havens, and you can start in any of the three of them. Uh, and apparently you write on your player bar. That's another thing you can fill in. They have them pre-filled in this case, but you fill in where you're from, and then that's where you start, at least in the first game. And then you, can, you get to name the cities, too. Okay. Yeah, the, the three havens you get uh-huh. to name. Um, yeah, so that was kind of cool. Um, didn't watch a whole lot of the actual gameplay, mostly because he was pretty clear that this was a very preliminary one where no spoilers or anything interesting would really get revealed <laughs> beyond what we already knew yeah um so we didn't stick around too long for that mm-hmm. we got, got other sweet, other things to do got some sweet band-aids yes they had well because they, they had a whole pile of band-aids that we that i saw and i was just like i guess that's for theme or something like that and then i just didn't uh, look at it until while we were watching them play we saw a guy reach near, near our bags to another box to grab out a bunch of bandages <laughs> and then throw them into a thing that's in the front of it. And we're like, this will well, actually be used for something. Well, then I noticed that the guy running the demo had one on his badge. Yeah. And that's why I was like, oh, Zach, those are those are pandemic band-aids. There's, yeah. Pandemic band-aids. So we have pandemic band-aids now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the rest of the day was uh, kind of just running around. Jeff, you you demoed another game yourself. Uh, I did. Uh, this one is uh, one of my friends, uh, Mark, who I've mentioned before on the podcast. A well, longtime friend. He does a bunch of mini painting for chibi stuff. Uh, he was working at the Ninja Division booth. Ninja Division does a bunch of chibi games and things like that. Uh, he's also doing their, like, painting judging this year. Oh, cool. Um, he's real good at painting. That's He knows a lot of people that are real good at painting, and I see a lot of pictures of stuff they do and get real jealous that I wish I could paint like that. Right. <laughs> but I do a podcast. I don't have free mm-hmm. time for that shit. No. Right. Um, this one was called uh, Wander Battle at Barnacle Bay. Um, they have... Uh, I guess the closest thing I could compare it to is uh, uh, Super Dungeon Explorer. Um, okay. Without like the chibi miniatures, so it's like like Arcadia Quest as well. Like yeah. That? Okay. Yeah. Um, like infinite sight lines and just a bunch of monsters that you murder, mm-hmm. uh, but pretty simple. Um. Had a cool demo. It's like one to five players. You all play different heroes, kind of like Zombicide. You'll level up as you kill things. Uh, the miniatures are amazing. Mm-hmm. It's all like animal people, uh, like a turtle. Uh, he's like the tank, but he lost an arm in the war, so all he mm-hmm. has is like one shield and like a hammer on one hand. Um, and then there's like a a goat wizard person, and you're okay. sh- and then you're like shooting. And killing like rabbit tentacle monster people that have been corrupted, or um, like the the warlock has grown. It's like a otter with wings, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> all the minis are really cool. Um, it's like three guys that have made this game. It's sort of uh, like large grid squares, uh, like you know, simple actions like move two, attack. Um, Things like that. Um, but it will have uh, a campaign. It's all co-op. Uh, up to five players. The minis are awesome. 
of course, the minis, uh, there's upgrades that you can buy separately that are like, you know, $15 minis. Uh, but for what all they have shown, uh, it looks like a really solid game. Um, they've got a Kickstarter coming up pretty soon <laughs> uh, for an expansion. Oh, okay. Um, but everything that they have there is super solid, and uh, they're really, really passionate, and, uh, like, there's events that you can get on certain grids, and they have, like, a 50-card event deck, and so you can kind of go through these games and makes them a little different okay, instead cool. of just the same scenario. I think there's going to be 22 scenarios in, like, a branching and choose-your-own-adventure type tree. Cool. Yeah. Right on. Um... You finished that up, and then you came and met up with us. That pretty much wound down our day uh, doing stuff uh, at the convention center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next, we, we headed over. We dropped our stuff off in Patrick's room. He was nice enough to let us stash all our bags that we were tired of carrying around. Mm -hmm. uh, ultra close to yeah. the convention center. Uh, fuck that. Yeah, he's <laughs> right there at the uh, Omni Hotel, which was really awesome. Just basically catty corner from the uh, beer garden. Beer garden. Yeah. And literally everything yeah which the beer garden was where we had the punch board media meetup today Indeed. and so we went over there um pretty much all of our friends from denver came over there uh, and hung out at various points throughout that but we gotta gotta hang out i gotta you guys gotta finally get to meet uh, jake and danielle from draft mechanic yep, yep. uh gotta hang out with phil a little bit more uh jeff you finally got to meet tom yeah who Patrick, was, not phil <laughs> <laughs> that was intentional. Uh, okay. um, <laughs> um, but Jeff, you finally Let's got to cover up, Adrian. You, you finally got to meet Tom after he uh, didn't believe you existed. He told us a geek way that he thought you were a figment of our imagination. Zach just changes his voice yeah. every once in a while. He actually said that even after meeting Zach at Geekway, listening to the show, he was convinced that your voice was Zach's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I don't know how that quite worked, but. Yeah. Uh, um, and th this is when you were talking with like Ant and Paul over there, and so I was like, "Yeah, he's over there somewhere." And then like I went off, and then you ended up, and I was just like, "I should just not be in the same spot <laughs> yeah, there we go. It's like when Jeff's there." <laughs> Alter <laughs> ego. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So that was uh, that was pretty cool. They did a whole bunch of raffles. Uh, Ken and Jake uh, kind of traded off raffling off a whole bunch of different games that we got donated to us from a bunch of different companies. I got offered raffle tickets by multiple people from Punch War Media because they had no idea who I was. Should, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. You say how Jake introduced himself to you. Uh, Jake was like, oh, yes, I'm uh, from Draft Mechanic. Here's the raffle ticket. We're just doing a raffle around here. Um, we're part of a cool network. It's Punch Board Media and stuff like that. And uh, you guys want any raffle tickets? And I'm like, hello, I'm Jeff. Uh, I'm from the Mile High Game Guys, partners with uh, Punch Board Media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there are still a few people that were there that I didn't actually get a chance to talk to. I didn't get a t chance to talk to the guys from uh, Board Game Gumbo, okay. uh, which I'd wanted to because I want to get awesome recipes for Louisiana food from them because that's uh, apparently something they, they are quite good at. I'm, uh, I'm sure you could probably be like, hey. Well, <laughs> yes, I, I still can, but I wanted to you know, get that face-to-face -face connection first before I just randomly in the Slack be like, yo, send me some Creole recipes. <laughs> I said hello to them, so okay. they know we exist. Yes. Yeah. Um, after that... Um, oh, I, I also... I, I met the vice president of Gen Con. There. That's right, yeah. Uh, so we were at the Sun King like Beer Garden. Um, I was talking to Andrew, who is uh, Ant's counterpart at Sun King. They've both been friends for a while. I had met him last year. Um, and I was just asking him Andrew, like, how does because they uh, Sun King has the like beer of Gen Con, yeah. Um, and I was like, who comes to you and just says like, hello, please make us a beer? And then he pointed about two feet behind him, and he's like, that guy, <laughs> 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 like literally. And I was like, oh, who's that? And he's like, oh, I'm the vice president of Gen Con. And I was like, oh, hello, <laughs> uh, I've been coming for 17 years. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he seemed busy. Is uh -huh. all I'm saying. Mm, Shocking. I yeah. I don't know. I don't know what would be busy about that job. Yeah. Running uh, Indiana's largest convention. Yes. Uh, for sure. 
I, I mean, like, his job's got to be like, all right, Gen Con's done. All right, let's start planning for next year. Yeah. Cause oh, yeah. There's, I, this uh, probably takes a lot of work. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's like, all right, Gen Con's in three months. Let's plan for two years from now. Let's get, let's get started right yeah. now. So. Yes, for sure. Um, but that wasn't the first person I met mm -mm. today. What? Uh, it's true. Of knowable, that was... of knowable. So that there wasn't the people. first. Well, well, I thought you were going to say like that wasn't the last. That person. wasn't the last person you yeah, met today. No. Yeah, I mean, it also was wasn't the first either. No. <laughs> so you're right. True. It's just you had no clarification. So you're <laughs> that, like, that wasn't the first person I met today. That's all oh, right. Yep, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's the, and uh, finish. <laughs> so we are uh -huh. exhausted. In case you couldn't tell. Yeah. Uh, so after that, uh, I ducked out to run some of my stuff back uh, to the house and then get some beer for a beer exchange a little later on in the evening. Um, meanwhile, you guys head over to the Omni for... The hotel bar. The, the hotel bar at the Omni. The, yeah, and so rolling dice and taking names was basically doing a, a strike tournament because on the show they had, like, uh, Rodney Smith from Watch It Played introduced one of the guys to strike yes and and so he really liked it but then the other guy hated it and you know the theme of the theme like basically it's just a vacuum formed bowl and then you roll in you're rolling dice and so the theme is you're you're doing um gladiators fighting an arena and the other guy is just like no you're just rolling you're just rolling dice in a bowl and tupperware and so <laughs> uh, that became a long-standing feud in the in the show and then so they had a tournament where half the people were actually just rolling dice and bowls and the other half were actually playing strike and then it was basically the, the winner from each one would fight each other and then whoever won that's what the show would call it now it would either they call it strike or, or they're an arena or it's just bowls and dice <laughs> Um, there was a lot of very loud people that had probably been drinking for quite oh, yeah. some time. They were really into it. This was yeah. post convention. Yep. Uh, this was definitely a like industry meetup mm -hmm. of like it's time to drink now. Yep. Uh, I had no idea what I was getting into no, in I, any way, shape, or form. I got to watch Efka from No Pun Included uh, strike out like <laughs> almost immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Secret Cabal guys were there. Um, rolling dice and taking names, obviously, yes, were there. Uh, being loud and, I think, running the tournament. Yep. I saw Ambie and Cassidy from Board Game Blitz. I got to yes. talk to Ambie very briefly. I'm not sure she remembered me from HeavyCon. She kind of had that look like, yeah. who is this person talking to me? And um, we talked to, for a significant period of time, Isaac Childress. Isaac Childress, yeah, uh, who I was not aware of what he looked like. So, they and go, some guy just wandered through, and then I was just was being the, like, "Hello, how are you?" and and then he was like, "Oh," and someone was like, "Oh, Isaac Childress," and I was like, "He was just like, I, I don't really know." Ooh. And then I just come up behind him, was just like Jeff, Gloomhaven guy, and then just just like, oh, 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 hi, oh, hello. Oh, 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 <laughs> Just, you can see a whole gambit of emotions <laughs> ran through yeah. him. Uh, so I had a long, I don't know, 30-minute conversation yep, 30, yeah. with Isaac Childress about stuff. Because mm -hmm. uh, he seemed like uh, he was not... He he is now board game famous, <laughs> and he's just a normal dude. <laughs> and he doesn't know how to deal with being board game famous. Mm-hmm. Not so much deal with, but like, oh man, I holy shit, I made a good game. Yeah. Uh, and what do I do with that? Right. And I was in for about ten minutes of the conversation, but not like I was. It was interspersed because most of the time I couldn't hear anything except for the strike people behind. Yeah, me. it was. I I was in there very briefly. I I, I got back from yeah. dropping stuff off and and came in there while Jeff was talking to him. And yeah, it was it was. Why you loud yeah. in there? Yeah, so we we spent a lot of time talking to him, and then the guy from Blue yeah, Peg, just, Pink Peg, and stuff yeah, like that, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, Blue Peg, Pink Peg, uh, and he was like, "Oh, do you listen?" And I was like, "No." Uh, and he's and then then he went through the whole strike thing because I didn't know what the hell the tournament was about because I have no idea the context behind that. Yeah, Patrick was just like, eh, "We're going here," and I was like, "Okay." Uh, <laughs> and, and, and Isaac kept interrupting him when he was trying to tell the story. 
And it was <laughs> to be like, you're embellishing. You're, it's like, it's too much information. He's like, I'm trying to tell a story. There's a narrative here. <laughs> I good. just wanted to know what the tournament was about, yeah, and he went through the whole detail. He's, he's like, too much uh, information. <laughs> of <laughs> why I le- enjoyed the narrative, yes, to be fair. Yes. Um, but then I talked to Isaac a bunch, and mm. he's like, and I was like, I, I'm sure you're tired of talking about board games. I mean, do you have any hobbies? And he's like, meh, board games. Like, all right. <laughs> he's like, I like talking about board yeah. games. like, all right. So, so do we all. Yeah, yeah, I just didn't want to bore him with, like, uh, it's like, ah, uh, fucking board games. I yeah. made one game, and everyone wants to talk about fucking board games now. Yeah. Uh, so I have his card, mm-hmm. and he could possibly be on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Seemed I, like he was interested in I know in Isaac on. Childress's phone number now. Yeah. <laughs> and he knows yours. <laughs> and he knows mine. <laughs> so uh, I just told Jeff, Jeff, just don't sext him. <laughs> <laughs> no dick pics to Isaac yeah, Childress, Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could. No, no unsolicited. Unsolicited. <laughs> unsolicited. <laughs> yes. Uh, he was very nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's got it going, mm-hmm. and I want to ask him how he's dealing, how he's how he's doing. <laughs> like, <laughs> Sounds like you're very concerned for are, him. Are you, are you, do you want him like a, do you want like a safe space for him or something? <laughs> do you need a safe space? Because because everyone wants you. <laughs> Top to bottom. Uh, you, you had one a successful Kickstarter that made the best game of the last year. Then you did another one that made millions and millions of dollars. And then you made a game completely different that made a half a million dollars. That the first post was like, you know this isn't Gloomhaven, right? <laughs> yeah, he felt like most of the Kickstarter was to be like, "This is the different game. It's totally no. don't expect Gloomhaven. It just has the name of the city." That's I it. just, I just, I just l- wanted to make one of these games. And yeah, everyone thinks I'm popular. So <laughs> yeah, uh, and then after that, we uh, talked with uh, Cassie Cassidy from Board Game Bits for a yep, while. We as well. talked about Columbus, Ohio. Yep, where I lived for one year, mm-hmm. and she currently lives. Cool. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but she has a massive she showed us her new board game room and I was mm-hmm. like, "Man, it's huge." Yeah. I wish I could afford a place like that. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> yep. One of the few things that are bad about Denver. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just didn't use my front yeah. room, so I yeah. turned it into a game room. Oh, okay. <laughs> when I uh, when I first got there, I showed up and the, one of the first people I saw was Tom, uh, who we've been talking to and I walked up to and he was in the middle of talking to Rodney Smith, uh-huh. and like, and I didn't want to butt in, you know, uh, too much. But I, you know, and I, so I waited until like they were kind of there's a long conversation. I was like, oh hey Tom, you know, I'm, I showed up, I'm here. And then right as I was about to turn and be like, and hey Rodney, it's really nice to meet you, and here's who I am. Like literally, as I was turning from Tom to Rodney, Rodney just turned around and walked away, and it was right. like, ouch. Well then, yeah. See you, Rodney. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. So. Um, uh, that was the only person I recognized in the room as soon as I walked in. Yeah. Besides Zach, I you guess. Recognized by visuals, but not by name. No. <laughs> Kept no. trying to call him Rado. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Jeff. They do videos of board games and how to play them. To, to be fair, he was like, I know it's not Rado. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is it again, Zach? <laughs> I know he's the watch it played guy. Yep. That's so we need. How I learned first martians so we need to get a little like earbud for jeff that just has zach on a mic so that anytime jeff goes to talk somebody (laughs) zach who the fuck is this person Uh, yeah okay and then i go back into it yes and that'll all happen in real time so you just (laughs) go hi and then you just go (laughs) fuck (laughs) great miming right (laughs) who the fuck is this yeah uh but I know how to talk to strangers, mm-hmm. so that yeah. helps. Yep. Uh, so I wasn't there for very long uh, because then I ran over. Uh, me and Tom left, and we walked like six fucking blocks uh, to where all of the rest of our friends went for lunch, and I had jumped out of the car to go over and spend like five minutes at the Omni and then went over for the heavy cardboard meetup, and they weren't where they were going to be. They'd moved to the exact same restaurant all of our friends went to. Yeah. <laughs> and so I got there, and like, because I'd asked Edward, like, hey, you know, where, where were the meetup was supposed to be? Nobody's there. And he's like, oh, shit, we moved to this place. And I was like, 
damn it, that's where all my friends are. And he was like, oh, shit, sorry, dude. And so sure enough, like, I get there, and they're all on one side of the room, and I'm like, oh, yeah, by the way, Edward, see that table of, like, ten people over there? That's all my other friends. Yeah. And, and he just yells over, he goes, hey, guys, don't worry, I found Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> and then Ant came over and talked about how I was stalking, uh, stalking them. So yeah. Yes. Um, but that was pretty cool. Um, got to meet the, got to talk to, I had already previously met uh, a couple of the guys from Board Game Anonymous. Uh, they were there. Uh, basically spent most of the time, it was kind of busy in the bar itself, and it wasn't like very conducive to a large group hanging out in one spot, so we kind of got strung out. So I ended up just sitting and having some dinner and bullshitting with Tom right. uh, for the evening, which was which was nice. I like Tom. He's a really good guy. Um, I mean, he changed his vote from me to everyone else, so. Yeah. <laughs> How great can you be? <laughs> yeah. um, and then after that, I uh, I walked my happy ass all the way back across downtown Indy yes. to try and go to that uh, aforementioned beer swap. And I've, I've been thinking on it, and I think I misunderstood what Jake's message said. Because I, I was leaving the heavy cardboard meetup at like 9.10, and the, the beer thing was supposed to be at 9.00. And I messaged him, I'm like, hey, I'm running a little behind, like, what's the status on this? And he's like, we just got back to our room. And so I thought that meant they got back and they were getting their beer and, like, heading down. I was like, sweet, I'll be there in about 15 minutes. I got there, there was no one. I messaged him, I was like, hey, where is everybody? No answer. I'm thinking, I think he meant they had already done the beer swap and he was back in his room. Yeah. And then they must have went to sleep. I don't <laughs> and, feel bad for you anymore now. Yeah. And so, uh... So, unfortunately, I carried beer around all day for uh, no good reason, other than I, to have a bunch of beer in a backpack. Mine was very heavy, and I drank none of it Yeah. until later. So, uh, but I at least do still have a bunch of really good Missouri beer, um, yeah. which maybe I'll still try and trade with Jake if he has some other stuff to trade. Maybe I'll just drink it myself on uh, the field of the stadium, which is where I intend to spend a whole lot of tomorrow. Yeah. I'm going to play a lot of board games tomorrow. I don't yeah. want to do much else. Although we do still have some interviews and things like that that we have to have to yeah. do for the show. And I mean, the, uh, I mean, when the... we talked to Isaac Childress today, I mean, fuck Jamie Stegmeyer, clearly. Yeah. He definitely, yeah. <laughs> and no, because we need to talk to him about, you, he needs to, questions need to be asked about Charterstone. Yeah. We need to find things out. Yeah. <laughs> Namely, uh, how many copies do we have to buy in our group for you to send us one review copy? <laughs> <laughs> Does he send review copies? I gotta think he does. Yeah. Everybody does review copies. I want to ask Steven. Like that's one of the things I always want to ask Steven when I see him. It's like Steven, I have myself purchased three copies of Terraforming Mars. <laughs> <laughs> like, how, what do I need to do to start getting review copies from you? Steven Bonacore was at the Omni. They, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. He, he's he's real good friends with um, Secret Cabal and yeah. Rolling Dice, Taking Names. They're all like pals. They all live in vaguely the same part of the country and so yeah. they do other like game night meetups and stuff outside of big events yeah i feel i'm at disadvantage for not knowing these people yeah yeah you should probably listen to more board gaming podcasts i don't have time to listen to more board gaming podcasts but you will now because you're gonna be in a brewery all the time scrubbing floors yeah <laughs> <laughs> just have headphones in just like Fucking Cinderella, fucking. <laughs> hey, that's Ant. That's floors. when Ant listens to our show. He listens to our show all the time at work, uh, and you're about to be working with him. Ant is the barrel overlord. I will be the barrel garçon. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> barrel garçon, take that one down with the forklift, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I it think was super cool meeting a bunch of people that are apparently super popular in the board gaming world you don't so, say yeah. yeah uh that was quite the event yep so uh on that note tomorrow we got a bunch of interviews um this is another one that's supposed to be a really quick short recap and it's yep. now been 40 minutes at least it's shorter than last time <laughs> not by much yeah but uh thanks for tuning in uh hopefully you guys are enjoying these little post day rundowns. I hope um, you're enjoying these mini episodes. Yes, these mini episodes <laughs> yeah. essentially. Anything so. less than an hour is obviously a mini <laughs> yes. episode. For Micro, right. micro-sodes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks for tuning in. Um, you know, hope everybody who is at Gen Con is enjoying Gen Con. Those of you who aren't are enjoying Gen Can't. And yeah, we'll talk to you later. As always, I've been your host, Adrian. I am still Zach. And I am Millennial Jeff. Bye. 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 Bye.